Welcome back, survivors. I'm the Survivalist, and welcome to, well, I was going to say Carnivore's Mandibles, but it actually looks like the mod is just calling itself Mandibles. So, I went through some of the comments I got about Triassic towards the end of the series, and the recommendations were mostly Carnivore's Plus. The problem with that, though, is it's kind of just the first game, Carnivore's redone a bit. And you only have three weapons to choose from, and as much as the species and animals look great and the landscapes not look great, the three weapons to choose from were a shotgun, an X-bow, and a sniper rifle. And as you guys have probably picked up, I'm not too much of a fan of hunting with shotguns, so I decided to do a little bit of looking around, and Carnivore's Triassic did have a sequel, which is what Mandibles is. Now, it isn't exactly going after dinosaurs in the mod. As you can see, it's going to be showcasing more of the, I believe, the Carboniferous Mega... Ah, what would they be? I don't want to say invertebrates. Arthropods, maybe? But kind of along that line. And I think... I wasn't sure if I would do this kind of route, but you know what? If it is sequel Triassic and I said we wanted to move on from there, I think this is a very fitting way to do so. So let's hop into Hunt and see what options we have. Okay, so we have a number of locations. We have the Gates of Dawn. This dry area lies on the borderline between the Aeos Sector and the Triassic Sector. Yeah, you can already see the little things there. Small forests of ginkgos, contours, and cycads dot the otherwise arid landscape, and soft rolling hills make for excellent vantage points. So we'll probably just stick with that to begin with. We have a number of different insects to go after. First is the Mac the Macrocana. Giant weta like insect is a relatively docile herbivore, which, when threatened, can quickly hop away from any threat. So it's basically a giant grasshopper of, or locust of sorts. Like many insectors, arthropods dangerous can easily trample a man to death. Okay, so it's not exactly just a grasshopper, it's a giant person crushing one. We have the Eoprotura. Strange creature is not an insect, but rather a more primitive type of arthropod. Walks on four legs and uses the two front limbs, feelers, and weapons of self-defense. Very basal herbivore, favoring soft plants, fungi over more woody plants. We have the Holcorobius? Holcorobius. Or, no. Holcorobius. This enormous rhino bee is almost a mirror image of the Triceratops and Chasmosaur of the planet's central sector, moving it like itself around, rubbing its horn in a similar fashion. Like them, also aggressive and will attempt trample nearby humans, so gotta be careful of that one. The Pulmono Scorpius. I'm guessing that's sort of like... <clears throat> oh, my voice going off there. Sort of like the mascot for the mod. Sort of like how the Lillian Sternus was the one gracing the title screen. Iconic giant scorpion is one of the most famous predators of the sector. Quick acting venom can paralyze almost any animal on the planet, which will use to feed... Uh, which it will use to feed on its still living victim without worrying about pu it putting up a fight. Ooh, there is Arthropleura. Giant myriapod is a force to be reckoned with. While herbivore, it will not hesitate to attack anything it perceives as a threat, using its enormous tree-cutting mandibles to wound the attacker and its many legs to trample it. And the last one we'll look at for now is the Critoborus. This carnivorous beetle is common around the Aeos sector and is not afraid to take on much larger prey. Huge mandibles, having evolved to great chitinous armors, prey can easily crush a human spine. So we've got a number of different species already we can start on, and one of the nice things, I do have to admit, is that you actually have a nice variety of weapons you can kind of go from just from the very start. So we have, yes, Smith & Wesson Model 500, 5-shot double action revolver is only handgun choice, piercing through the armor of the arthropods. Fast shooting rate, but accuracy declines with distance, ideal for close quarters. The Searcy Double Barrel Rifle, no, it's a, it's a elephant rifle, really? Designed for hunting elephants on Earth, is a solid medium range weapon of average strength, whose grace vandalized and ability to fire follow up shot quickly without having to reload. That is pretty helpful. And the Mauser 1819 TG. Anti tank rifle sacrifices rate of fire and loading speed for sheer stopping power. Highly effective at close medium range, can easily pierce through the armor of most arthropods. And lastly, the HK 417A2 20. This version of the HK417 battle rifle is modified by Dino, bleh, by Dino Hunt. I swear I'm going to get better recording. It's just taking time. Enjoying the full size of the sniper model without, with the increased fire rate of the assaulter. While powerful, its modifications come at the cost of accuracy. So I think what we may start with is actually doing the double barrel. And, ooh, we can't get double ammo quickly, so we'll do that. And maybe we'll pick up a couple of different things we can go after as we go to the dates, Gates of Dawn. Now, one of the things I think I may do 
is actually do a dawn hunt and see if maybe this will make it a little easier for us to kind of get used to the herbivores and their halves. Because it says here, which I've never done in any of the other series, which I probably should have, was that dawn is a good time for hunting herbivorous creatures because they are less scarable. Carnivores are less aggressive at dawn. So I don't think we'll turn on Tranks, I think we'll just use this. Yeah, there's no point loss, which is superb. So with that, we'll hop into Mandibles and see what it has in store, shall we? Okay, so we're loaded on in here. Oh, hello. A Diplocalus. Oh, I'm surprised you're not one of the huntable animals. You actually, you're kind of a nice little guy to see. And Arkham... Okay, that is the Archimilacris. Archimilacris. And the Meganeura, that's a pretty common one. But I want to take a look at you. I like you look little early proto-amphibian, I think. The Diplocalus. I've always wondered about what adaptations made for such the wide sweeping head like that. Like it reminds me of the hammerhead sharks in a way, but maybe it Oh no, I think I scared the poor little guy off. I wonder if it's developed like that because of trying to search through the early silt of I think he was around during the Carboniferous, but I don't exactly know for sure. And, well, maybe it's a little odd to be talking about lore in a game like the Carnivore series or even the mods, but everything takes place on a distant planet that has animals that are sort of similar to Earth's. They aren't the exact same, so it's more like you're kind of hunting aliens than you actually are prehistoric creatures. It's just that they're... Oh, Lord, how did I get into this mess? Okay, well, let's get out of that mess and take a look. Ooh. Actually, we're in... We got dumped into a pretty remote area of the map, didn't we? Well, it says west is our... Ah, but west is towards the border of the map. Okay, well. I guess we're going to use the wind sort of against us for a bit. No, oh, I guess that's just the sound of him kind of bound in a way. We're going to try to make our way to the south a bit and see what the other areas on the map are. Because this is... I do have to admit, one thing that I have noticed on... Well, actually, I did little test plays of both Carnivores Plus and Carnivores 2 Plus, just kind of see if they would be good series to do. They, the environments are much better in those than in Triassic. Triassic, I feel you went a little too jagged and rough with the landscape, so it felt hard just to kind of maneuver and get around. I wonder if this is actually the gates it was kind of talking about, because it was called the Gates of Dawn, I think. But the landscaping and the... Oh... Yeah, we won't be getting through that. That looks pretty harsh to try to get through. Just take another look around, and yeah, there are actually calls you can do for the insects. I oh, what's that? Oh, just another dip of calls. But is that the environment? Actually, I might even be able to scale up this one in certain spots. The environments are much smoother and much easier to sort of make your way up and along and go through. Like, Triassic, you had a lot of really dips and rough bumps that were kind of a pain to try to figure out if you could go that way or not. I mean, I probably am going to have some of those problems with this as well, just because on the map I don't really see any way out of this little bowl of sorts back here. Well, that might just mean we have to do a little bit of hiking and jumping. I mean, it was kind of working. Maybe we can get up this way. I think it's just about finding ourselves a little bit of a spot we can hop our way up. Yeah, here we go. Okay, there we go. We're finally up. And we'll just leave Sprint on because we have quite the mountain to get over. Yeah, this is more what I was thinking we would probably see in something like a, oh, a Hylonomus. Yeah, I want to take a look at that see what that is. I think it's another ambient animal, but it looks like it might be a reptile. Like, Diplocalus was, is a definite amphibian, but this one, yeah, it does look like a small reptile. We can't just show off all the game animals, we also gotta show off the ambient animals. A lot of detail and effort goes into every little bit of these mods, so it's good to try to show off as much as we can through... Yeah, look at you! Oh, and a Diplocalus over there. Okay, but now that we're kind of in more of a... Well, what I was expecting of a sort of Carboniferous or... 
Mega Arthropod mod is just kind of swampy marshland forests of sorts. So this should be good terrain for us to be able to take good looks around, try to spot anything around us. I don't know how the weapons exactly perform. I do like the idea of getting some very heavy hitting weapons and an actual variety at the very start of the game. Because for some reason, it makes it feel like it's more shooter than hunter if you start with a revolver. That's just how I feel. One, That's one thing I think Dinosaur Hunter Reborn, the kind of... I'm uh, wondering, would it be a remaster? I don't feel like it would be because it didn't include enough, but... I guess that more modern remake of Carnivores that came out a while ago did right was that you got a proper rifle to begin with. It wasn't a shotgun or a pistol. It was a rifle meant for, well, hunting. There's a reason why the rifle is probably the most common firearm used for hunting nowadays. It's just, it kind of has everything you need as long as you're a good shot with it. But we'll keep going about, see if we can find anything. Uh, I think I might have turned the density down a little. Actually, I don't think I've actually altered any of the settings since I started everything up, aside from getting the uh, resolution and stuff put up a little higher. So that might make it a little harder for us to find game, but we'll just take our time looking around. Oh, just the Meganeur is going around. They really do an amazing job with all the sound effects for the mod. That's superb work. And we'll see how much of a series we can get through Mandibles. I'm hoping at least another... I'm thinking maybe 10 episode series. I think that might be a good series for Mandibles. Because we do have the variety of... Game to go after. Weapons to go after. Islands as well. I don't know if I'll suffer burnout on this one as much. We'll have to kind of see. I think one of the things could be that with the... With all the animals more insect more being, well, insect and close to the ground, they might be a little easier to hunt, just because even if they do sprint, they're not, like, a bounding figure. Basically, they don't have the legs to prop them up, and the terrain feels a little smoother, so they won't be kind of bouncing up and down as they're either closing in on them, or they're closing in on you. But we'll have to see how I kind of perform with mandibles. Just head out this way. Not another Hylonomus, but not really seeing anything. I was kind of hoping we would have come across something by now that would have been a game animal. I also, oh, well, I don't know how the pistol out. We'll be using this, and not really an iron sight, but I think we can probably work with that, because there's enough detail here that you can probably use where you should be focusing. Oh, hello. Oh, I think we spooked it off, yeah. Yeah, so we sent that one running, so we'll have to mind the wind, because I think that was what startled it more than anything. And then maybe even after I do mandibles, I still have a bonus. I did mention in the comments, I will do a bonus episode on Triassic covering the bonus animal. I was just feeling a bit of Triassic burnout before wanting, to, before trying to grind all those points up and trying to get it. So I'm going to take a little breather from that with mandibles, and... I may even turn, after I do mandibles, I may go back to something like, say, the Hunter Call of the Wild, just to kind of show off the kind of leaps and changes that there are in the hunting systems in between the games, and honestly, almost make together a little wish list of what would probably be one of the best hunting games out there if you kind of blend the two franchises in a way. Like, I think Carnivores definitely does better in making you want to go out and see what the animals are, like, who doesn't want to hunt dinosaurs, to be honest, if you're playing a hunting game? That sounds like a really cool thing to be able to head out and do. And that is... No, I don't think that's one of the ones we're after, yeah. That's not one of the three we got, so we'll keep an eye out and just slowly work our way along. Run mode is off, so that shouldn't alert anything to us, or at least should help not alert anything about where we are. But I'm surprised that nobody's really tried to capitalize on the idea of a true dinosaur hunting game. I do think hunting games definitely have fallen off the grid a huge amount from what they used to be. So I can remember Cabela's used to put out a hunting game almost every year. Now granted they had some odd ones like... Well, oh, odd ambience. Uh, they had a few different games like, or series like their most dangerous hunts and then more typical hunting games. 
I still actually remember one of my first hunting games was probably Cabela's Big Game Hunt, either Big Game Hunts or Big Game Hunter 2005. And, oh god, trying to go back to that, the graphics look so bad, it's so hard to imagine how, well, I can't even say I actually probably hunted in the game, it was more just being a dumbass and driving around with the vehicles you got and the weapons, and it was just honestly a surprising amount of fun. I think it's one of the things that got me into hunting quite, or, yeah, my enjoyment of hunting quite a bit. I do have a copy of that for my... Uh, I still have a GameCube. That kind of tells you how old I am, doesn't it? But yeah, that kind of got me into it, so I think that also might be a reason why I'm more open to being able to go through Carnivores. Just, like, as much as people probably get on it for its age and its graphics, I don't mind it whatsoever. I think it almost feels more like a... Well, kind of look at what indie games and the indie scene is now. Is You have a lot of pixel graphics and these more retro feel for games. Okay, just more ambience. Oh, that's just the Mega Nura. But there's more of this kind of retro feeling and pixel art and stuff like that where if the game's concepts are good, it doesn't really matter how much the graphics are like. I mean, that's something to kind of say... I mean, look at Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind or Fallout 1 and 2. The graphics at the time were pretty good, sure, but even if you were to move along now, it might not look the best, but you still have some very good gameplay behind some of these. And I think that's where so much quality of game making and just games in general have dropped off is... I think one of the best examples is World of Warcraft Classic. Like, it's odd... I know I'm jumping around quite a bit here for this talk, but this is actually probably my, one of my most directed rants I think I've ever had as I've been playing a game, so I'm going to stick with it. Is the developers, they didn't just make the game. They actually played it. So they knew what, 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 bleh. Not that many what's, but they knew exactly where the game needed to be tweaked, what things could have been not as enjoyable and should have been changed. You basically had the passion of not just developers behind the game, but players too. And I feel like that is where a lot of games are suffering more now. Is you're just a developer of it. You don't actually play it yourself to see how fun and enjoyable it is. Like, I feel like that's where so many games have started to really show. Fallout 76, I think, is one that's, I admit, I haven't played it. When it comes to Steam, I'll have to see, depending on what the kind of feedback is, because it supposedly has some survival-esque stuff to it. I may try it just to see what that kind of dumpster fire could be like. I think it had potential, but as soon as I pitched it, I knew it wasn't going to work well. I knew as soon as I pitched it, it wasn't going to work well. Fallout's biggest strength was not for being able to build a world around yourself. It was to explore a world other people had built. And you're, it's just... I'll see how that goes, and if there's comments wanting to see it, and that. I may try covering it. I, like I say, I leave it up to the comments, really, to see. But if you want to make a good game nowadays, you must be... No, oh, just more ambient noises. Man, there is nothing I can see so far. I'm going to have to try a call soon at this rate. I mean, we... No, I'd rather not go hunting the poor little Diplocolis. I'd like to try to find or see something out here. I knew I, the density wasn't set very high, but I didn't think... Oh, excuse me. I didn't think it would kind of be this scarce and barren out. Then again, the sensitivity could be that... I haven't tweaked that either, so very well could be that everything is already picking up on me as I come into render range so that just immediately scurry off. I do hear something, though. There's a Mega Nera, but... Oh, it's just one of you. No, I hear something. Oh, maybe it was just that over there moving around. I could have sworn I 
still am hearing something kind of skittering around near us. Oh, is it just you I'm hearing walking around? Very good detail on the sound effects, though. That really... Oh! There we go. We found our first one. A Macrolena. Or Macrolena. I really don't know what the pronunciation would be, but we found something. And this is where hunting may get a little easier for us, because it is... Another thing, too, is with it being so low to the ground... Is it might have a harder chance seeing us until we're... There we go. We actually got our first one. A mac... No, Macrocana. Or Mastrocana. Oh, God. I'm probably going to butcher so many of these names. But we do have something we can see here. Oh. And something in the water, too. But... We got our first one. And it is quite a big one, isn't it? That's our first successful hunt in mandibles. I have to say, I think I can get behind this more. I wasn't sure if I would be behind going after things like the arthropods or the insects, but you know what? I think this could work. But I just had seen... Where'd it go? I don't think it was a game animal, but... There was... Well, there's the Hylonomus. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe that was a game animal. We actually spooked it off. And now uh, I can't seem to reload, unfortunately. So I think we'll probably be... Get one more shot off, and then it'll be in a reload. So we'll have to try to make the next shot count, which, whatever we find. Although, actually, we're actually... I don't want to make the episodes go too long, just because... If I want to have the videos go out in higher quality to... Well, higher watching visual quality. I have to do a different kind of render rate. Like, what I was getting away with for a while there was... Uh, well, I don't know why I was doing a variable bit rate of 6. But I'm going to be cranking that up to about a bit rate of 10 from now on. And depending on how graphics heavy some games are, like say the Isle. That'll probably be doing more at 15. I also do have... You'll probably actually see all you guys as this one goes live. We've already seen the first two episodes of the Isle, and we'll see the difference the encoding bit rate really means for visual stuff. Like, I really can't say I'm too happy with how the first episode turned out with how bad the graphics were, but I didn't really realize that until after I had it rendered and it was kind of tight for when I could get it up. So, it is in the description saying that the next videos do steadily get better in quality. So, at least that's one thing that you guys can look forward to. And I think I will do at least an ep um, probably two episodes per week of the aisle. We'll see how the feedback comes from the first two episodes and how people enjoy it or what people like about it. I'm hoping to use that as one of the, chan er, one of the series to help grow the channel quite a bit. We've had kind of steady progress up to another sort of capping point, but it is just kind of fighting the algorithm and keeping content out there that maybe people will pick up on. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to get better at remembering where my rants go, but I think I've really covered most of what I wanted to talk about as I got to those subjects. Like, if you are going to make a good game, be sure to ha be a player as well as a developer. Don't let yourself be kind of fooled into developing it entirely and thinking just because I like it, everybody else will, or this is my dream and it will. You have to play it and also understand where you have some pitfalls or some things you can improve on from the player's standpoint. Oh, what have we got there? Another Diplocolis. Man, I wish you guys were a huntable species. You are all over the place. Oh, no, that's just a tree root. But yeah, take that route, be a player, try to look at it from the perspective, not just at you developing it, but also how you're kind of taking it as a player. Oh god, probably going to, yeah, there's going to be a few screen flashes from us walking this way. We'll make our way along. Yeah, and that pretty much summed up that little ramble, a uh, little update for just how the aisle videos are going to be. They've 
first two have already gone out by the time you guys are seeing this one. Oh, no, just you going about. Okay. Thought I heard more skittering, and it was something skittering, just not a game animal we could go after. Although, I guess we can probably just call them bugs now, really. Like, everything we're hunting is... I suppose you classify it, my layman's terms, as a bug. I mean, the scorpion is more of an arthropod. And I actually don't think there are arachnids in this, so... At least that's one nice thing for anybody who's a bit of an arachnophobe and might be worried about the series, is there shouldn't be any spiders in it, I don't believe. I actually don't know when they sort of evolved, now that I think about it. I assume there probably had to be spiders in the Carboniferous period. If you had things like the Arthropleura and the... Actually, I don't even know if the Pulmonoscorpius was around the Carboniferous, or that was another time period. Anyway, it was the age of giant insects, so more than likely it was also the age of the arachnids, or there were some arachnids around then, too. It really makes you get into where did they first originate from, and how did they kind of develop. I do hear... a bit of movement, but I think it's just from what's over here, because there's another one the Arkham... Yeah, it's just you I think we were hearing going around. I was hoping to have a little bit more of uh, something to show off for you on the first episode, but you know what? I think it's still even a good episode on its own. We got our first successful animal hunted. We've got to show off the map, which I have to say, I do like these kinds of maps a lot more. The terrain's a little smoother. It's easier to go up and down. You don't feel like you're fighting just trying to look around and go through places. It just has a better feel to it than... The Triassic's almost artificial ruggedness kind of did, in a way. But as we're bringing this over and we're getting closer to the half hour mark, because I think that's going to be the video caps for now, I think we're going to leave this first episode of Mandibles just about here. I just want to get over this next ridge and see. We actually will probably end on a pretty nice screen, too. Yeah, so we'll wrap things right here, looking not directly at the sun, but just enough for... Almost, uh, wallpaper in a way. Actually, let's see. Yeah, you could basically use that as a little wallpaper in a way. Well, thank you guys very much for joining me on an episode of Carnivores... Well, I shouldn't say Carnivores Mandibles, but on Mandibles. This mod already looks as... I'd say a little better than Triassic, just because... Some of the textures and the graphics feel like they fit the models better. The landscape and the terrain, the maps feel more natural. And the weapon variety is nice to have right at the start. But until I see you all in the next episode, Survivors... Please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.